Good day ladies and gents, I hope everybody's doing well today. Today BSG decided that the time has come, it's time to put lap access cards on the flea market. So right now you can buy and sell them on the flea if you've got some fun and right. Right now they're going for 150k, which is literally I think around therapist price, 3460k, so close enough. And uh, so I want to cover a couple of things. So first of all, regarding the lap cards, I think this will lead to overall more people playing the map. And potentially this will lead to more cheaters playing the map. As soon as people unlock Flea Market on level 15, um, they can buy the key cards in unlimited amount. And most of the cheaters are low levels, right? So instead of farming Therapist max level or trying to get their key cards from scabs, cheaters will just be able to go to the Flea Market and, and buy cards. So if you don't play laps, that's a good plus for you because there will be less cheaters on other maps. That's like a guaranteed thing. You will be, you will be meeting less cheaters uh, outside labs. Uh, however, since there will be more usual players playing labs as well as cheaters, overall the whole labs uh, cheater, cheater group will be diluted because there will be more players and hopefully it's not going to feel too bad if you decide to play labs. I personally love playing labs and I'll still keep playing labs and I actually want to wanna see how it goes. So this is the first thing for today. The second thing which I want to cover is the... So I, um, I chilled in Pastelis stream yesterday for a bit and he covered a couple of interesting points of how the game um, could become better. So I want to go through them and share my opinion. So, um... Basically it says that BSG can test this and if it doesn't work out, they could always turn it back. First point, change the ping limit to 220, allow people to play with their friends again. Um, I got nothing, I got nothing against that, like we've got Chinese people on EU already anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't really see how it, how it can become worse. Um, a lot of people told me that uh, with higher ping there will be more desync and there will be more deaths that are behind the walls But to be honest, I'm playing on Russian servers sometimes and my ping is 5 And I meet other Russian players, other Russian streamers that play with very low ping And the desync is still the same, I still died behind the wall like 1, one second later, like 0 0.7 of a second later So uh, ping, ping does affect Peeker's advantage, but I think at this stage um, with the current netcode uh, Additional 20, 50, 60, 70 ping, I don't think it will do much of a difference, if I'm honest. Second thing, allow lab keycards back on the flea and buff lab loots, labs loot slightly. Let the cheaters go back to labs and farm it. People can PvP in labs again. So, uh, this is the video from yesterday and BSG allowed lab keycards on the flea today. So maybe Nikita was watching Pastelli's stream or maybe Nik maybe Pastelli submitted this, this document already. Three, buff the loot in locked rooms. Marked, Ultramat, Kiba, Old School, East 10, etc, uh, etc. Et Make locked rooms exciting again. I think that's a really good point, because right now most of the top tier um, rooms, like marked rooms, are completely use useless, except the one on streets. The, the marked room on streets is like 3.5 million rubles, um, if you want to buy it from the fleet. And it's actually worth it. Most of the time you can find really good cases. I found injected cases. Yesterday I found um, two keycard folders in the same opening. And the rest of the marked rooms are just empty, like I opened the one on customs and it's either empty or there is an AK or like 5 FMJ bullets or something. So I agree, this needs a buff. Kiba is also pretty pretty lame if I'm honest. Open fleet to all items, make found and raid only required for the task items. Yeah, I've been saying this thing for a while that I think that would be the best thing that BSG can do for um, found and raid items. So if you have a quest from proper to get five screwdrivers and they have to be found in raid, you have to find them in raid, right? But if you get something out of the raid, you can sell it no matter if it's found in raid or not. The only downside that I see and that my chat told me is that there could be naked runners, people that just run naked, go to the shoreline east uh, 3, east to 22, get the ledex, shove it up their bum and just disconnect. Like that's the only downside. However, uh, there will be more incentive for PvP, as you will be able to sell... So, let's, let's, let's imagine you kill a juicer. You can get his gun, you can sell the attachments from his gun, you can sell the 60 rounder from his gun, you can sell the bullets if he's using top tier bullets, you can sell his helmet if he's using a good helmet, you can sell his armor and his backpack. This is an insane amount of money, so I think that would be a game changer for PvP players, and that would give more incentive for PvPing. Completely remove Oculus Audio, it's literally unplayable and the main reason I've stopped playing. We can't understand why people are inside the buildings at all. Um, I don't think, I think BG is gonna remove Oculus Audio because they've done way too much work and hopefully they are 
getting to the point where um, well, we're gonna we're gonna be getting patches with Oculus Audio. But I do agree that Oculus Audio is really bad. Um, I always kept saying that I personally don't agree with BSG releasing Oculus Audio in in its current iteration. I don't think it was ready to be released, but they think otherwise. Well, their opinion, their choice. Um, so yeah, I don't think I don't think that's gonna happen. There needs to be only one time selection per map. This condenses players to play with each other more. Each map could have different times. Uh, I don't really know about this one. Like, if, if, if each map has different times, it's not realistic, blah, blah, blah. All the realistic player is gonna come out. Um, yeah, I don't really know about this one. I personally like to play daytime. I don't like nighttime. Yeah, like, even if it rains outside, the rain forces me out. Like, if it's raining, I would either play reserve in D2 underground, I would play laps, or I would play factory. So, I don't want to be forced to play at a certain time of the day. So I personally don't like this idea. Dog tags value 1k rubles per player level. Can't pick up dog tags of the people you queue with. Um, all those doctors will have zero value. Uh, great, great choice. I don't know what BSG haven't decided to do this earlier, but yeah, yeah. I think uh, dog, tag, dog tag value should be um, a bit increased. Maybe, maybe not 1k rubles per player level. Maybe there should be like a <clears throat> progressive graph. Uh, but overall, good idea. Killing players gives more XP. No XP for killing a teammate. Yep, um, I'm totally, I'm totally fine with that. Killing bosses gives more XP. Maybe three to five k. Um, that's a good thing. BG kept, BG kept lowering the amount of um, XP you get from killing raiders and bosses. And this wipe, there is barely any difference between killing raiders and scavs. Um, even though they are on a completely different level skill wise. So I think uh, I will, I will agree with this point. Bosses and players uh, definitely do need a buff in terms of giving more XP. Um, so yeah, I think this is uh, more or less it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the news. If you didn't enjoy the news, please still give a thumbs up because because um, I don't know why. I don't have any reasoning. Anyway, um, I hope you have a wonderful day. Sub to the channel if you still haven't. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.